What is up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of Body Language with Barry. We are on episode two, where we are going to be talking about the vaginal microbiome. I love this mini series because it is able to really give you guys a lot of understanding and context to things that perhaps you don't know about or have never heard about. I know for the longest time I had never heard of the vaginal microbiome, and the moment I heard about it, I was like, duh, like, duh, this all makes sense. Now, if you've never heard of the vaginal microbiome, essentially it is the basis of your health as a woman. And in today's episode, I'm going to be delving into what it is and why you want to keep it healthy and how to keep it healthy. But before I do that, I want to say a few things. First, yes, I am congested. I don't even want to get into why I'm congested, but that's a thing. Second, I want to give you a little life update. I am in the middle of a home buying process and that's pretty wild. You know, I feel like my consistency on Instagram has been lacking, but it's because I, again, am not in the environment that I want to be in to create. And that makes things really hard, especially being an environment-based person through and through. But on a completely different note, I want to talk to you about Instagram. So we're doing this new thing called Love It or Loathe It. And it's basically going to be me reviewing viral period products, health products, PMS stuff. Um, and I'm excited for this because it is something so new and so different for me, but I'm also doing a do this, not that like period and PMS edition. So if you are not following my personal Instagram at Barry on Elberry, you're definitely going to want to, because there's just going to be snippets of things shared on Instagram. Um, but one of the upgrades coming for 2023, um, you will definitely be like, Oh, this isn't enough on Instagram. Instagram. There, it's got to be more information somewhere else, <clears throat> YouTube. So I just want to keep that at the forefront of your mind. And the last thing I want to share with you all is the fact that I love you. And I really do hope you are having a great day, not just a good day. But with that being said, let's jump into all things vaginal microbiome. So first thing, what the heck even is the microbiome, right? Specifically the vaginal microbiome. It's a community of trillions of microbes that actually live in your vagina, the vaginal canal, right? Microbes include bacteria, which is a good thing mostly. Certain bacteria in the vagina can actually help to keep it healthy. But when there is an overgrowth of certain bacteria or an imbalance, such as a hormonal imbalance or a bacterial imbalance of any kind, it can actually lead to a bit of disruption and discomfort itching, odor, or even vaginal infections. And the vaginal microbiome is really the whole ecosystem that is your body. It is like an essential part of that. So any type of imbalances there can impact the rest of your health. So it's really important for us to keep this environment in a state of hormonal balance, which is why it's so important to know what it is why it's relevant to you and how to keep it healthy, right? So that is what it is. It is the basis of your health as a woman. Now there's a really good chance that you are thinking, why do I care? And let me just share this with you. In 2018, a study was conducted that shared 138 million women suffer from recurring bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections, and the numbers were slated to increase. Of that 138 million women worldwide, 9 million were in the United States. And I have heard so many women say like, oh, I have chronic yeast infections. Oh, I'm dealing with bacterial vaginosis. And I'm just sitting there looking like, sis, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, now y'all, let me... Let's unbutton this a little bit. You know, let me let me just keep her 100 with you. I'm 28 years old, okay? I have never once in my life had a yeast infection, a UTI, or bacterial vaginosis. And the amount of people who tell me, oh, I get it all the time, I'm just like, but but why though? So for those of you who don't understand the difference between bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections, let me just say this. One is candida based, which is the yeast infections, okay? So essentially it's caused by an overgrowth of candida, which is a type of fungus, which can be found in the vaginal canal. Like who would have thought, right? 
in the vaginal microbiome, whereas bacterial vaginosis is bacteria-based, and oftentimes that's due in, to an imbalance in the vaginal microbiome. Like, it's beyond wild to think that people are normalized to assuming, you know, yeast infections are normal or bacterial vaginosis is normal while it may be common that doesn't necessarily make it normal and it's also something that can be fixed right if you understand the vaginal microbiome now let me share something else with you research shares that 60 percent of women who deal with either the yeast infections or bacterial vaginosis are likely to see it return within 12 months um what? What? No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. We are not doing that, right? And you might be thinking, well, Barry, I don't understand what the big deal is. First and foremost, like the odor, right? Don't nobody want to be smelling unpleasant. That's what I'll say, right? The discharge. It can be a different color. There's stuff that can be like thin and milky white or gray. You got stuff looking like cottage cheese. It's like, mm, excuse me, you can be itching, burning, and irritated down there. <laughs> Don't under, no ma'am, no sir, no thank you, right? And then you have this increased pH, which can actually throw off the homeostasis of that vaginal microbiome. So that's why we're talking about it today, because I think a lot of times we don't realize how our food is connected to what our environment is like down yonder. <laughs> but I also think a lot of people don't realize how, you know, your tight pants in certain fabrics as it relates to your underwear could be impacting that. Or better yet, how certain detergents and things like that could be throwing off the balance. And we don't want that, right? So that's why we're having this conversation today. And let me just say this. If I am, like, if you feel very, like, attacked while I'm talking to you, I'm so sorry. Like, y'all know me. I come from a space of love, but I also like to keep it real. And sometimes, like, it says you gotta check your panties, right? Check it. Like, she not smelling right? Like, girl right so we're gonna get it in check but i wanted to share that because now that you know what the vaginal microbiome is why you should care about it right i want to also put into perspective how you can take care of it with some really tangible things but one last thing on the why you should care the reason why you should care is at the end of the day like you want to feel confident in your body right you don't want to walk into a room and think like, okay, somebody could maybe smell my nether regions. <laughs> and also, I just want to say the reason I'm like being so descriptive is I know some of y'all have kids that listen to this and like, I don't want to say like the wrong thing, you know, so just keep that in mind. But <clears throat> you don't want somebody smelling you from like afar. Like there have been moments where I've used a public restroom and like, you know, there's a difference between someone's like poop smelling and then someone where you're like, um, is that a body odor I'm smelling? And then when you're me, you begin to put things together and you're like, mm, no ma'am. No, ma'am. So I want to just say, like, that's why you should care. You should care about really taking care of your vaginal microbiome so you can feel not only confident on your period, but empowered in your body, right? That's why we're having this conversation. So how can you bring this balance back to the vaginal microbiome? She's been out of order for a while. She's not in check. What can you do? There's a lot of things you can do. First things first, nail your nutrition. I know y'all are tired of hearing me talk about it, but I don't care. You want to know how to eat your way to a better period? You want to know how to eat your way to balance hormones? You want to know how to eat your way to something that doesn't smell unpleasant when it comes to that vaginal microbiome? You're going to go ahead and get Nourish Your Flow, okay? It's the ebook, 119 pages for you, 60 plus recipes, gluten-free, dairy-free, refined, sugar-free, all of the things. Go ahead. It's linked in the show notes. Get into it, sis. Okay. That's where you're, that's rule number one. You're going to start there. 
Number two, depending on what it is you're dealing with, I want to encourage you to get a probiotic. We all know Barry recommends the seed probiotic. It's called a daily symbiotic. It's both a prebiotic and a probiotic. And the reason I am recommending this is because it's literally going to improve the gut health. And when you're improving your gut health, you're also improving your vaginal microbiome health. And as stated before, the vaginal microbiome, right, is actually going to be the basis of your health as a woman. So anything that you're intaking and digesting nutritionally is going to impact it. And a probiotic or better yet, the daily symbiotic from seed is going to hook you up. And y'all know me, like I keep it real sis. Okay. Use the code Barry, B-E-R-R-I 15 at checkout to save. The next thing I want to target and talk about specifically are those of you who deal with bacterial vaginosis, yeast infections, or UTIs. So for those of you who deal with UTIs, the first thing I'm going to say is check out the Semaine UTI support supplement. Listen, we all know I love Semaine. Why? Because it's clinically proven, scientifically backed time and time again. The scientist formulates it. I love Matt. He's a phenomenal person, but also the other two founders, uh, Lar and Kath, are people that I've built a very close relationship with. And I know for a fact they're not creating trash. Like they just don't have time for it. And like I will put my stamp of approval on it. And that's that. For those of you who deal with bacterial vaginosis, I would actually recommend. <clears throat> pardon me, I would recommend not only the seed probiotic and daily symbiotic from seed, right? I would also recommend that you stop wearing leggings that are too tight. Stop wearing panties altogether if you can. And here's why. Okay. We got to air it out. You got to get some more air to that pathway to help your body get rid of some of that bacteria. A lot of times people don't realize this, but when you wear leggings too tight, that's blocking air that needs to get to the vaginal canal. And by now, I think we all know that like most leggings in the center portion where your labia would sit, there's an open hole. Why is that? To get airflow in there, okay? That's gonna help you air it out. Not only this, but you know, there's a lot of like, uh, home remedies, old wives tales and natural remedies that you could use. I'm really not a big fan of them. Like, you know, I know people talk to me about boric acid wash and all those things. I think the best thing you can do is leave her be. So wear dresses for like a week. I know you're like, sis, I, I don't like the way that I'm smelling. And I understand that maybe, you know, Saturday, Sunday, stay in the house. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to tell you, but like you want to actually air it out so your body feels really good again. And then also when it comes to how to actually wash, your vagina really is self-cleaning, right? Right? So the best thing you can do is like stop trying to clean it with all those things that have terrible ingredients. Like we want fragrance free as much as possible. Now, if you're like, sis, no, I absolutely need a wash. You need to recommend one. I suppose I would recommend one from the Honey Pot Co. And that's because on a scale of like one to 10, their vaginal washes fall at like a seven for me, uh, they're passing, but because there's still fragrance in it from the natural herbs that they use, I'm still like eh, on the fence, right? Because there's technically a filler ingredient to help it stay on the shelves because you buy it on the shelf. I'm like, I guess, I guess I can deal with that. But like, that's why it falls in that range. If you want to know what I personally do, I just like honestly use my Castile soap. It's very simple. I don't do anything too crazy and wild. I don't have a separate wash for my JJ than the one that I actually use for my body. Like it's all the same thing. I just make sure that I actually just wash the labia and allow the canal to clean itself because that's what it's supposed to do. So that's what I would say about bacterial vaginosis. And for those of y'all who also deal with yeast infections. I would also make that um, same recommendation in addition to considering a candida cleanse, okay? Now listen, I don't normally recommend like detoxes and cleanses and all of that jazz. That's just 
not really in my wheelhouse of expertise, but because yeast infections are fungal based in dealing with candida specifically, a candida cleanse could actually benefit you, especially if you're somebody who has a very high like sugar diet or somebody who has like a very high processed food diet altogether. So that is something to consider. However, they are not for the faint of heart. This is not something you just do like one and done, like I'm fine. No, 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 no. If I were you, I would ease into it. I would first use my ebook, Nourish Your Flow, to get your eating in check first and foremost. And usually that can help you like bring balance back to the vaginal microbiome. But I would also add to that by doing a specific type of cleanse. So there's certain things you can and cannot eat. A lot of them are pretty hard to follow, in my opinion, because it does like eliminate so much from eating, but depending on how bad they are, it might be worth considering. So that is the what, the why, and the how of your vaginal microbiome. I guess another tangible thing I could supposedly recommend is, you know, go fragrance free as much as possible, toxin free as much as possible, endocrine disruptor free as much as possible when it comes to the clothes that you're wearing and the products that you're buying. Um, if you want to know specific like things that I recommend um, in terms of my like detergent and personal care products and stuff like that, let me know on Instagram because I feel like this is like kind of like a visual thing and I can show you. I'll be fully transparent with you. I am in the middle of like moving all of my products to very toxin free. So I'm constantly doing research and trying things I like and don't like. And with greenwashing being so present, it's kind of hard for me to find certain things. Like people swear by using like vinegar and like baking soda. Uh-uh. I don't want to be walking around smelling like vinegar. And the last time I tried that, my clothes were not the color I wanted them to be. You feel me? So like I am on a hunt. And if you are somebody who has great recommendation, drop me a DM, let me know. But I hope this has definitely helped you. And in the next episode, we're going to be talking about your cycle as it relates to some of those things we've talked about. So we're going to talk about the hormones that are key players throughout your cycle, right? Obviously, we're going to talk about the phases because baby knows that is like where I throw arrive. Okay. That is my jam, but we're also going to be talking about your vaginal microbiome and touching on your thyroid, your liver, your gut, your metabolism, and what those all have to do with how you personally experience your cycle. And that's going to set us up for success for a later episode on chronic conditions, which I have been dying to address. Like uh, we are going to be talking about PCOS, endometriosis, hypo and hyperthyroidism. We're going to be talking about fibroid and all of that. So with that being said, if you enjoyed today's episode, please let me know on Instagram. Make sure you share it with a gal pal, rate it and review it, and let's get into it. As always, I'm sending you big love and optimal flowy vibes. I'll talk to you soon.